Hi, this is Dana for Split Coast Stampers. In this tutorial, I'll share a technique that allows you to create fine highlights in your pencil coloring. I've stamped an image onto 100 pound Bristol paper, and I've got a piece of regular wax paper here and a small ball stylus. I'm laying the wax paper over the image, and with this stylus, I'm pressing into the paper and creating indents where I want to see highlights when I color. This is great for details like hair, fur or whiskers, patterns, and tiny sharp highlights that are hard to leave uncolored when you're working with pencils. If you don't have wax paper, you can do the technique without it. It does help though to give the stylus a smoother surface to move on so it doesn't catch in the paper and it protects the ink of the stamped image too. If you have tracing paper, that should work pretty well too. For the hair, I use longer strokes and I follow the direction of the lines in the image. For the spots on her shirt here, I'm going to work in a circular motion to press the paper down in those areas. And you'll see when I start coloring how creating those indents allows those details to remain white while we color around them. I love Phyllis Harris's images for this technique because she's so good at creating motion in her images with hair or wind or flowing dresses. I just really love her style. For the puppy, I'm going to use small, short strokes to create the texture of fur, and I'm making my strokes just in the same direction that the fur would lay. So I'm going across the body, across the tail, and then I'll go down the legs and ears, and I'll also add a couple of lines around the tail to show that it's wagging. For this technique, you'll want to use a heavier weight paper so it has some give for indenting. What I'm using here is 100 pound Strathmore Bristol Smooth, but other papers will work too. As you're working here, it's not important to keep the wax paper in one place. So if it slides around or if you feel like you've worn out an area but you still wanna add more texture there, you can move to another section of the paper. Here you can see the indents that I've made, even though it's hard to see them on the paper itself. I'm gonna be using Chameleon Color Tones pencils to color in the image. And I'm starting off with a light pressure here. And even with that light pressure, you can begin to see the indent showing up as highlights as the color goes down. I'm gonna to continue to use a light to medium pressure as I build up layers of color here. And you don't wanna to use too heavy of a pressure or you'll press down into the indented lines and lose those details in the finished image. If you're unfamiliar with these pencils, be sure to check out the review our product focus team did on them. They are wonderful artist quality pencils and a lot of fun to use. So here's a closer look at the hair. Those highlights really add a lot of dimension. I love this technique. I'll move on to the puppy now, and I'm using the same technique with layering color using a light pressure. I'm working with a lighter gray first, and then I'll add in my shading with black. And I tried to keep my pencil strokes going in the same direction as the indents that I made on the puppy earlier. I'm not terribly worried about light source because I usually assume there's soft overhead light. So highlights are toward the tops of things, areas that are closer in the image and areas that are curving out. And then shading is the opposite, toward the bottom of things, areas that are further away or curving away. And we do have a tutorial in our resources section called Pencil Shading if you need more tips on color and shading. This is another tool I recently learned to use with my pencil coloring. This is a battery operated eraser and it's great for removing small areas of color and adding highlights. This one is by Derwent, but there are other brands as well. The eraser can be removed and replaced and you can also sharpen it to a point for smaller details, which is really cool. I'm using a sanding block to create a point on it and then I'll just press it to the paper while it's spinning to remove color from areas that I want a little bit lighter. So that's a fun little toy and it's pretty inexpensive as well. This one is only about $5. So I'll link that on my blog in case you wanna get the same one. So again, this image is by Phyllis Harris and you can find it in a set called Life is Better at Unity Stamps. For my second sample, I wanted to add a pattern to the fabric of this little girl's dress. So I've stamped the same image on Bristol and on wax paper using Stazon ink. 
and I'm going to sketch in my lines first. So I'm just following the curves of the dress and creating a little plaid pattern with a permanent marker. And I didn't worry about going over her arm there with the marker. I just need to make sure I don't go over it with this stylus when I trace. I lined up the images and I'm using the back side of my Misty as a magnet board to keep my paper layers in place. And this side works really well because it's padded and that gives me a soft base for my indented lines. Again, I'm just tracing the lines that I sketched with the stylus so they'll be indented into the paper. And then when I color, they'll remain below the surface of the paper so the colored pencils won't hit them when I color with light pressure. I rotated the wax paper and I'm adding in a few more lines in the hair and some dots around the dandelion. And then I'll color with light pressure like I did before. And you can see right away how that pattern pops out. We do have a tutorial on coloring fabric folds too, if this type of image appeals to you and you decide to do one yourself. It's written for Copic markers, but the theory of shading is the same for any medium. So check that out if it might be helpful to you. I jumped ahead and finished coloring off camera. And you can see where I added the indents around the dandelion and in her hair. I'm going to use the eraser again to brighten up the highlights on her skirt and also to add some texture to the dandelion seeds that are floating away. So this is another image by Phyllis Harris for Unity Stamps and this set is called Every Breath. Here's my completed card. This technique has lots of possibilities for all kinds of images and I hope you'll give it a try. Thank you so much for watching.